Hello everyone. In today's session, we will see what are the infrastructure table in the Informatica MDM Hub. So if you see uh, the MDM Hub console, we can enable the history and the other functionality in the hub, in the hub view as well as in the staging table. So I'm selecting the view address table. In the if you see on the right side of this console, we have the of one property called as enable history once you enable this history the history table will be get populated for this view also for the staging we have the functionality where we are populating the raw table the raw table not, nothing but the history table for the staging it also populate the previous landing table so we will see all those details in today's session so these are the configuration detail for the uh, some of the configuration for the BO as well as the staging in order to populate or in order to create infrastructure or the metadata tables. Let's see one by one. So in today's session, we will see what are the basic tables, what are the infrastructure tables and details about each table. So there are basically three tables. One is landing table, staging table, base object table. Landing and the base object can be a single, even the base object is always single, one table. But the staging table depends on the how many source system you have. If you have the two source system, then there will be two staging tables. What about the infrastructure table? For landing tables, we do not have any supporting or the metadata or the infrastructure table. However, for the staging table, we have four infrastructure table. First is raw table, second is PRL, third is reject, and fourth is OPL table. For the BO tables, if you enable history, if you have the trust enable, uh, so and the other uh, match and merge property enabled, then the uh, four, 14 metadata tables will be created like like CTL, DRTY, EMI, EMO, it's, uh, HCTL, HIST, HMRG, HVEXR, HVXREF, MTCH, STRP, VCT, VXR, and XREF. So these are the 14 tables get created during the creation of the BO tables. So let's see the details about each table. So st starting with the landing table. Landing table actually it provides the intermediate storage of the uh, intermediate storage of the data in the flow from the source system to the Informatica MDM hub. So for the one system, for example, we have one source system, we can populate, we can have one landing table or we can have the multiple landing table so that is what is it is mentioned the screen one source system could populate multiple landing tables yes that is possible and a single landing table could receive a data from the different and the multiple source systems landing tables are mapped to the staging tables that we know so if you see my previous session we have seen we have created mapping between landing and the staging tables and the landing table can be mapped to one or more staging sta staging table that is what we already mentioned a staging table is mapped to only one landing table that is very important one staging table have only one landing table one staging table cannot have multiple landing tables src row id is a system column this is very important SR source row ID we call the SRC row ID is a, it is a system column which is populated in the landing table along with the last updated landing tables are populated using batch or the real time approach batch means we can have the ETL process to populate the landing table or we can have the web service or the real time application which will push the data into the landing table stage process push the data from the landing table and it actually standardizes the data, it applies the cleans functions and push the records to the staging table. What is the staging table then? Staging table is intermediate table in between the landing and the BO. As like the landing table is intermediate table between the flow of data from the source system to the MDM hub. 
So staging table contains the data from one source system for the one base object table. The structure of the staging table is based on the it is real. It is very important that the structure means if you have the 10 columns in the base object table, then your staging table have 10 or less than 10 columns. So the structure of the staging table depend on the what is the structure of your base object table. You must have at least one source system to define or to create staging table. So there are various basic columns are by default created in the staging like the PK source object, row ID object, SRC row ID. So let's see one by one. So PK source object having the 255 varchar uh, property which is the primary key for the source system. So PK source object is a primary or the primary key in the source system or we can create combination of you can use the combination of column which will create a primary key in the staging table that is nothing but the pk source id row id object is a primary key in the mdm hub and uh, it is get populated during the stage process so row id object is get populated at the stage process we have to keep this in mind src row id it is uh, as we seen this prob uh, this column in the it is also present at the landing which is again the same and it is a uh, database driven property base object this is the uh, this is the table where the actual golden or base version of truth of the record is stored so base object is a table in the hub store that contains collection of data about individual entities like the we have the person entity organization entity product entity employee entity or any other entity those that enter to get stored in the base object schema manager must use to define the base object so it is not allowed to create the base object using database utilities like the sql developer or any other tool so you have to use the schema manager to create this table so base object table there are various important columns out of that row id object is the primary key column However, the consolidation indicator, delete indicator, dirty indicator, upset indicator, and CM dirty indicator. These are the few important columns from the base object. There are other several important columns like the last updated date or deleted date, deleted by, created by, updated by. So these are the supporting columns. But out of those, these are the important columns for the base object. Let's see infrastructure tables. So we know at the staging level we have the raw, PRL and uh, other supporting tables. Let's see one by one. Raw history, uh, actually it stores the history of the data. It is very useful for the hard delay detection process. We will see the hard delay detection in detail in the next session. Records are kept in the raw table for the either configured number of stage jobs or the number of uh, what is the retention period we have. So if you see, we have enabled this preserve and audit trail in the raw table. So we can enable this property for the three or the given number of loads or we can define the particular retention time. So this is what if you have defined this property accordingly, the system will behave. Records are kept in the raw table for the yeah we have let's say if you choose the clear history button in the batch viewer, the records in the raw and the reject tables will be clear in the next time the state job is run. What does it mean? So if you go to the MDM hub, go to the batch viewer and if you select any batch, okay, uh, for example, I'm selecting stage, we have the clear history button. If you use this clear history button, the record from the raw table get cleared when you run this stage job again. So this is what it is mentioned. If you, yeah. So let's see the next. What is the PRL table? PRL is abbreviation for the previous load, which is used for the delta detection process. It's again. So if you see the stage job or the stage table, 
if you see if you enable delta detection then previous landing table will be populated so and this is PRL table is always used for the delta detection process the informatic hub stay uh, hub state job will compare the entire source record means what are the record coming from the source again the most recent corresponding record in the PRL table so what are the record present in the PRL table that is uh, what is the record present in the source item that is compared with the record in the PRL table even your history table contains the updated record or the more recent record the records are always get compared with the PRL not with the history table reject table it is very important table and it's created during the stage process each reject table is associated associated with the staging table and it is named staging table underscore RAG records from the reject table get removed when number of stage jobs are greater than number of loads so for example if we have the three stage of you if you run the stage job three times and but you run the load job only two times that means your stage jobs are greater than the load job in that case records from the rejectable will be get removed or will be get deleted then what is the reason of the rejection okay so there are a couple of pre uh, re uh, reasons for the rejection first is last updated column so if you if your last updated column is having the future date or the null date re record get rejected if your last update date is less than 1900 again it is get deleted we populate the pk source object with the null values it is definitely go into the reject table again it the pk source column should not have the duplicate if you have the duplicate the record get rejected during the stage job only hub state indicator if you provide if you know we have the three hub state indicator values like the minus one one and zero if you provide any other values it is invalid so it will get rejected and if you define any unique column unique uh, your custom column or business column as unique and you provide a duplicate values in that column the record will get rejected and it will be sent to the reject table let's see details about the bio infrastructure table so we have the 14 tables infrastructure table which will get created if you enable some history validation rules or if you enable the time plan, time plan. so there are there are various properties accordingly the number of property a number of tables will be get created during the bio table creation CTLA, CTL is it, it is nothing but the control table. If you enable the trust, the CTL table will be get created. What is DRT table? DRT is it, it's a dirty table we call and it has a row ID object column. So dirty table has only one column and that is nothing but the row ID object. So what does it mean? Actually this row ID object identify uh, it identifies the base object record for which match keys need to be generated so all these all these records which are present in the drty so those record need to have them need to create match key for such records for huge for each unique row ID object the tokenized process generated match tokens so when you run the tokenized process match tokens will be get generated and then it will delete or then it clean the dirty table once you run the tokenized process for that particular row id object so what are the process involved for the dirty table population so dirty table get updated during the load process if you insert or update any record the dirty table get uh, drty table get a populated with that row id object when you run the tokenization function, record get removed from the DRTY table. What will happen with if you run the consolidation process? That is the merge process, match and merge specifically. So MDM hub consolidate the match uh, match record and the MDM hub populate the dirty table with the row ID object. So if you have the two records which are merged into one, so that consolidated record again push for the dirty table for the regeneration of the key what is emi and emo table 
these are the external match table which uh, EMI table contain the record to match again the record in the base object so if you do not have enough process setup or enough data so you can use the external data so that you can just run the match uh, process and you can analyze what uh, what are the configuration you have made so this is the so that's why external match tables are very helpful in that case emo it is uh, nothing but the output data so what are the record got match with the input uh, external match input table so and the base object table those will be populated in the emo table HCTL it is nothing but the history table for the control table we know that we already seen this is a HC, HCTL or CTL is the nothing but the control table when you enable the trust hist for the if we enable the history for the base object HIST that is his table will be created history of merge that is HMRG that is when you record get merged it's a history also populated VXR and uh, VXR is also history of the VXR table. HVXR is the history of the VXR. XREF and the HXREF. HXREF is the history for the XREF table. MTCH is nothing but the match table. It, it actually contains the base of the match record in the base object resulting from the execution of the match process. So when we run the match process, the record which are got match those those will be sent to the match table strp table h it actually contain the match case which will get generated during the tokenized process vct and vxr those are the control table as like the uh, ctl table and xref it is a very important table in the hub or in the informatica md hub you know, which is helpful to lineage of the data it is used for the tracking the origin of the each record in the base object. So we have the history of the XREP also and that is nothing but HXREP. And if you enable the history, the, all the history table will be get created. So this is for the infrastructure table which are available for the staging and the, for the PO. I hope uh, it is helpful for you to understand what are the infrastructure table involved in the MBM. If you still have any questions, you can mention in the video below. Thank you for watching the video.